Yes, here we go. It's the BMP. It's been a while, Terry. And I think today we can safely call it a phrase I used to use years ago. It was a slobber knocker. That was a slobber knocker, Terry, today. Um, Celtics got a three old draw Ibrox. Do you know what? We took the draw before the game. I think there'll be mixed emotions around the fan base. I'm more of the positive angle, but I know we had a wee brief chat before we came on, and I know you're feeling a wee bit deflated by it all. Get the lighting right, mate. Like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think when you see reactions as well, it tells a a massive story. And actually, I think actually, did we did we did we not lose that game? Did we not lose the title today? Because yeah, that, all yeah. the coverage, all the coverage I've seen in the last last half hour is. Rangers players high-fiving each other on the park, Rangers supporters and Rangers players engaging in championship-like celebrations, a Rangers manager talking as if he's won the title, Sky Sports interviewing people from Rangers as if they've just won the title. Did did we lose that game by three or four goals, or did we get a fucking draw in the hardest match of the season? Well, this is one of the things that we're going to talk about. I think the reactions, as I say say a lot of the story of the game as a massive story. We're going to talk about that as well. And many of the factors that led to the, the result being the result. And I don't just mean officiating. If anyone thinks I'm going to be, you know, over-egging that, I won't be. I want to talk about football as well. I but there, no, there'll be plenty of the official stuff to talk about. But I also think there was a, a game of football with a hell of a lot of substance to it that's worth, worth a chat as well. Um, and as I say, I think the reactions will be, will be a focal point of today's conversation as to where it really does leave Celtic in this title race. A title race I don't think we should have been in, but we're in nonetheless. Anyway, we'll do all that good stuff very quickly. Give us a wee like, give us a share, hit subscribe, all that shite. Boise Bus member, one ninety nine a month. It's Boise, there's content. new pie. There's yeah. new pie. I'm going to I'm gonna have to put uh, an order in. Piesports.com. They've it? got a meat, meatball yeah. marinara. Oh, meatball marinara, I know. There could be there could be there could be a three figure order going in the night. <laughs> <laughs> three figure order. <laughs> yes, yes. Please eat your pies responsibly. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> no, uh, more, no more than seven in one night. Yeah. The most I've done, the most I've done seven donor donations in one night. I'm not taking any more. Look at the size of my face because of it. That's a good record though to have, mate. Seven donor donations. But let's talk about the football. We will get stuck in because. It was a game that really, we don't need to get too much into it to kick off with what happens. We scored after 21 seconds in a bizarre Maida Tavernier moment, add it to the collection. I felt there was a game plan um, by Celtic to target Tavernier. I know he's, he's revered as the best right back in British football and things. Rogers definitely identifies him as a weakness defensive, defensively, as did Postacoglu. And I thought today, you know, instantly... You see that any hesitation with someone like Maida, yeah, it's a block, but when's Maida ever scored a good goal? I think that one at Easter Road <laughs> with that, they're always scuffy, they're always scrappy. It's brilliant pressing. I thought Celtic first half in general, the whole game plan, the strategy was utterly superb. I thought the way they pressed was calculated, it was as a team, it was very, very much in unity. If you watched when Rangers go along the line passing the ball, one goes up, the next one goes up. It just looked like there was a real a real game plan that was being executed by Celtic. And obviously, the first goal helps. That makes it always look a bit better. But that first goal goes in 21 seconds, Terry. The seatbelt didn't even have a chance to get put on. And it was already being ripped off as you jumped off the couch or whatever it was you were watching the game. Um, it certainly wasn't Ibrox if you're of a Celtic uh, persuasion. But what's a start to a, 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 what was already a powder keg of a fixture? That was as explosive a beginning as we could have expected, right? Unbelievable, boys! It was the first Celtic touch of the ball, and it's probably it's probably made his best finish of the season, <laughs> as we've seen later on when he when he should have really put the game to bed. But um, I don't think that that goal doesn't happen by chance, right? So we've been talking since since Maida joined Celtic, and we've been talking in the build up of these games, and we've been talking about how important he is for Penn and Tavernier back, and all that kind of stuff. He makes those runs all the time. He puts defenders under pressure all of the time. Most times they get away with it. Most times Tavernier knocks that ball out of play. It's a throw in and nothing happens. But today it just happened to be that he gets a block on it and it ends up in the net. But that's not by chance. That is because of the percentages that 
we play with Dyza Maida in that position, closing down that particular fullback. So that's that that may look like a lucky goal, but that's not a lucky goal because all those times that he's done that before, it hasn't ended up in the net. But because he keeps doing the right thing in the right position at the right Good point. If yep. you keep doing that, then you know, anybody looking on from afar goes, that's a completely freak lucky goal. That's not a lucky goal. That's because he's been doing the right thing every single time he's played against this fullback for Celtic in the last two years. So it, that's not luck. That's not a lucky goal. You can talk about flukes. You can talk about, that's not a lucky goal. That's a reward for the efforts he's made all those times that he made that same run, all those times that he made that same challenge, all those times that he made that same block and nothing happened, that's the reward for all of those. So that's not a lucky goal. To, to the naked eye, it looks like a completely freak goal. It's not a lucky goal. That's that's a reward for that man's efforts. Yeah, I, I actually think the more I watched that first half, especially when you were on the crest of a wave because I thought it was an excellent first half overall, but you feel like with this fixture... For all Maida's moments of, geez, oh man, raffle winner and all that sort of thing, you know, comes to mind when some, you see some I of know, his final I balls. Know. But you know what? This fixture's designed for Maida. He's their worst nightmare in this game because a lot of the, the, the game boils down to the, the, the intensity of your press and the consistency you can do it. Maida's the one who can do it for the 90 minutes, not just the first 45, which as a team were more impressive. But Maida encapsulates what's kind of required in this game. That level of intensity, he's had the nightmare for them, mate. And you're right, the goal is, is by design as opposed to luck, albeit the optics of the goal. goal. He's, in, he's inside Tavernier's head, boy, say he's inside his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, if, you look, if you look aside from, and we'll touch on it, we'll touch on Tavernier's penalty. Aside from the fact Tavernier scores a penalty, I don't, I don't think he got further than 25 yards outside his own box the whole game. And that is... That is what Maida gives you in yep. this fixture. In this now, if we're playing other teams where we've got all the ball and yes. it's total dominance, he probably doesn't give you he probably doesn't make the same impact. But forget about the fact that Tavenier scores a penalty, which he took, which he took well. It was a good mm -hmm. finish. Take that out of the equation. Tavenier was not in our half. Tavenier was not yeah. in the Celtic half other than dead balls. And no, Maida's tracking minimum. back as well. Eh? That's the He's tracking back. It's, a, it's unbelievable. Yep. Yes, that's the Do minimum you know Maida gives you. But then you've seen the rewards for all those runs that he made over the last two years that yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. happened because of. And today, we got the rewards of it. Well, you've got another guy who, who obviously sort of tries to sort of match that in terms of his intensity with his press. And I, again, I thought there was another strange player identified by Rogers, which... You wouldn't have expected before the game. As I'm not going to say it's a weakness, but to catch him off guard. And I'll tell you what, what, what struck me was Butland was obviously caught unawares by the, by that that freak goal, whatever you want to call it, after 21 seconds. But only a couple of minutes later, do you remember Rio Atati tries to lob him from outside the area? Yeah. Jack Butland, and it's clear there is a put pressure on the goalkeeper. Kyogo closes him down two, maybe three times. And actually does get on the like deflects the ball, whatever, when, when Butlin's trying to clear it. Again, a decisive, a decisive game plan from Rogers was when when they pass back to that goalie, fucking press him right away. Do not give him a second. I thought for all Kyogo not getting the reward, perhaps, that what Maida got with, with his instance, I thought it was quite poignant that. There was different ways of applying pressure that we've seen in that first half. As I say, when I seen Atati try that that audacious lob, I thought, oh wow. He's got if he's trying to make that goalkeeper nervous. I thought that was the impact was get him edgy for the get-go. 21 seconds in that goal goes that that, that goal's conceded, and then suddenly Atati's trying to catch him off his line. I know it goes wide, fine. But he's just planting seeds of doubt. Then it's every time he took a touch, even a yard away from himself, button. Q goes on, yes. straight on it. And these Absolutely. wee moments give you what's called momentum. Because it goes, oh, they look a wee bit shaky. They look a bit nervy. By this point, I think Celtic are in complete command of the game. I thought midfield-wise, we could talk about Awata individually over his whole 90 minutes. First half, I thought he did well. I tie the difference when this guy's on, 
on song playing well is you know you really do see a difference with take him. It back, take it back, Boise. Let's take it back to the starting lineup because I was okay. I was hoping I was hoping beyond hope that McGregor would have made it. But, yeah, but. But he clearly was no he he wasn't even close to being made it. And we we'll, we'll talk about the goal where he's culpable. He's absolutely culpable. And I thought when he came on, he'd zero influence, which means he was nowhere close. McGregor was less than fifty percent ready yeah. to play that game. He wasn't ready at all. So I was hoping when we're all refreshing, we're all refreshing the the internet, trying to get the team list. One one hour and fifteen minutes before, I'm hoping he's on there. We got the way clue with Carter Vickers' picture going up uh, this morning. Then we got the absolute inside information from Regan St- Re- uh, Stevenson that told us McGregor was going to be on the bench. I was hoping he was on. I was disappointed when he wasn't. But see when you see when he came on, he was nowhere near it. He's fifty percent absolute tops, fifty percent ready. So you've gone. You've gone with Awata, you've gone with O'Reilly, you've gone with Hitati, and Hitati's still not right. He's clearly not right. His influence when he was on was superb, but the right call was the team that was made because McGregor was nowhere near it. Hitati was never going to play the full game. If you start McGregor and he plays the way he did, you're taking him off after 10 minutes. Then you know Hitati's only got an R in him. You're having to tick him off. So the team lineup was was completely correct. The only thing from my perspective, and I know this is this will sound like an absolute ridiculous statement to make, but we did talk about it the last time you and I were on. Wouldn't be like you. No, no, we did talk about it. The only thing I I kind of had in my head today, I thought this could have been a game for Forrest. And the manager talked about how there will be times where James Forrest is pivotal in this run-in. And I thought I thought Kuhn was disappointing today. I you know he got booked, which I don't I absolutely don't have any idea why he got booked. John Beaton is pointing around the stadium. He was pointing at Celtics fouls collectively. No, he was Beaton's literally coming up Celtics fouls. John the Kuhn's fouls. He was basically like fouls. But none even, of them were he said, what he said, what was John Beaton that looked to me was saying was Celtic have now committed six, seven fouls, so I need to book one of you. Right, it was bizarre that. Uh, but... Listen, listen, listen. That's that's an absolute joke. And we'll talk. We'll talk about John Beaton's influence on the game. And but let let me let me just summarize that in in one line. Oh, please this, do it in one this, line. This was a slobber knocker, right? This was end to end. This was two teams. This yep. was Glasgow's green against Glasgow's blue. This was end to end. This was everybody fucking giving their best. Celtic had four yellow cards. Rangers had none. And we'll talk about John Be- Beaton's influence on the game on the major decisions. But I, I I prefer to think about John Beaton's influence on the game and the hidden stuff, the stuff that goes unnoticed, the throw-ins that go one way when they could have gone the other, the free kicks that are given one way when they're not given the other, and the yellow cards that are given to one team but not the other. Was there was there a bad foul in that game? There wasn't one. Yeah. But, 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 no, but, yeah. but there's four there's four yellow cards for Celtic, and that's that's yeah, yeah. all building. That's all building towards a But let's not jump about too much, Terry, because we've been losing the structure now. You we're, we're back to the start Shush. lineup. You know, no, no, no. Shush. Shush. Terry. Shush. Terry. We'll, work, we'll work our way back Terry. round. Terry. We'll just work stop. our way back round. Stop. Let me okay. just get there. Right. So what's happened at 1-0 is before all these yellow cards are given, all right? So what's happened at 1-0 is I felt Celtic were dominant at this point in time. And I thought we were good value for a second goal. Thank Astonishingly, you. it's a Connor Goldson handball. Connor I Goldson. I don't believe it. I know. <laughs> I don't believe um, it. I mean, it was, it was a, it was like wow. I, I That's actually been five think, years in the making. Yeah, there's something to it as well. But when you watch John Beaton's face going up to the monitor, there was almost this resentful look that he's been told already in his ear. This is blatant. Oh, I see. There's I no way when you see this. Oh, I see. I've re- I've written down on my sheet, and you know I've got a sheet. I've written down. This is a very uncomfortable moment for John Beaton, right? Yes. So, so just, just, just put yourself in the position, right? Imagine you were a Rangers supporter and you were also a referee 
and you've been fucking, you've got that dread. He, he's hoping, he's hoping in his ear that he doesn't hear anything. And he's been brought over. And this, this is where Scottish football is different to the rest of the world. You have got a supporter in the middle of this match with responsibility for that match. Yeah. And I actually thought, I actually, at that moment in time, I thought, I would not like to be John Beaton because you're going over there. You know what you're about to see. And you're a fucking supporter of the other team. And that's a very difficult position to be. And I don't care if he's getting a grand. A grand. I don't I don't care about a grand. I would have swapped a grand for Celtic to get the win the day. Yep. You, you know, he's walking over there. He's on a grand. And he knows he's going to have to give a decision against his yeah, team. He's been, he's been, he's that's, been told that's in his unfair, ear, Terry. That's an unfair Terry, position to be in. He's been told in his ear, I think, on his way up to that screen, by the yes, way, this is Stonewall. So you could see it in him. There was almost a fuck's sake. And then when you see it, but do you know what? See, sometimes as well, things have a funny way of working themselves out. And I'm like, Goldson's got away with that a million times. See, if that, you one, that one wasn't get any worse than the last one. Aye. But like, what, what, what I'm trying to say is, see, when you actually watch what Goldson does, he has his eyes shut. Yeah. And he's actually where he's putting his head towards is so far <laughs> off the direction of the ball. That this has been this has happened time and time again in his career, by the way, and this is the first time really they've had to go. There's no no way out here. <laughs> There's no way. Like he has to get. He has to. This has to be given against him, and it was the right decision. But finally, finally, him being called <laughs> up after, for after something I think he's done. Has been done. Crawford, uh, Allen, this is, Crawford Allen's behind the sofa. You know this, isn't I mean? this isn't a one off. This isn't a one off. What Goldston's done there, um, but. At the end of the day, we then get the penalty. Matt O'Reilly, where have you been? Because we miss... Play the bus back. Play the bus back. You and me have talked about this. Yep. We have spoken about Matt O'Reilly taking penalties, but not just that. When it comes to the composure that he shows, you're like, the amount of penalties that we've not scored. I mean, and you've got a guy that at Ibrox, without one Celtic supporter in the ground other than Maybe Tom Boyd and David here. I think the camera panned to. Then he was there. He just, he just thinks it down the middle. That sort of composure. I thought that was class. I, I like stuff like that. that. I don't like it. I don't no, like it was that. utter composure. He sold the goal. You need to remember that. This isn't yeah. just because it looks good. This is giving a goalkeeper the eyes and then the, the, the slight turn of the foot. Just clip it down the middle. Yes, it looks great. It's a wee bit of extra panache, but a completely controlled penalty. And, sort of level of composure as I go back to that you're looking at going how have we missed so many penalties when you've got someone with that ice in his veins to do that it does lead you to be a wee bit frustrated that why have you not took responsibility before now or actually the question I asked of you Matt you should be taking these yeah. you'd be why good he, at this why has he not stepped up before boy say you, yep. you and I this isn't this isn't through chances penalties today you and I have talked about why is O'Reilly not taking them he's got composure he strikes the ball really well. But I still, I still, I mean, I don't see any different in his penalty today and the one that Ida missed. The only difference was that the goalkeeper's leg got in the way of the one that Ida missed. That, that penalty today still wasn't a good penalty. I don't care what anybody says. I, you can talk about it as composure. You can talk about it as nonchalance, arrogance, wh whatever you want to say. I still don't think it was great. I, I prefer to see the penalty taken the way Tavenier took it. Bang, top corner, no problem at all. But it almost feels as if O'Reilly, O'Reilly stepping up today was like just a product of all the poor penalties that we've had. You know, he seemed like a reluctant, a reluctant penalty taker. And I know it looks great when it comes off, but like there's a reason why. He hasn't took one before now. He obviously didn't fancy them, but the thing about that one... Uh, Could he have been as asked as the question, given, though? Could he have been asked given, the question, Ted? Start to shake yourselves, because you don't think we're going to score it. Could he have been asked, though, in the past... Like, I appreciate what you're saying in terms of he could have took responsibility, but is there not, like, also maybe someone like at Celtic who can identify, like, you'd be good at this? You're taking responsibility. Oh, I believe in you to do it. We identified it about a year ago. Yeah, so do you know what I mean? This is what I'm trying to say, though. Like, you would think within 
training. They might have had a wee, yeah, a wee hunch. Strikes, Someone might have... Strikes the ball clean. Strikes the ball clean and is very, very calm in possession and is very comfortable on the ball. Mix. Yep. A good penalty taker. Yep. I, I, I don't know if he's so took I, one I before in his it. career. I've no idea if he's took one before in his career, but... You, you play the percentages, so you've got somebody who strikes the ball extremely cleanly. He's very cool in possession. He yep. seems like a calm, level-headed guy. Yep. To me, that puts him up towards up towards the top of the people you 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 put a penalty up for. Yep. Uh, well, I totally agree with that, and and I'm glad that he scored it. And at that point, at two 0 you're going, okay, this is not looking to be a looking to be a beautiful Sunday. We then have guilt edge chances, Terry, and there's a couple I want to talk to you about because see Maeda's one. He's actually got time to set himself there, and it's tame. But Butland pushes it away, and I actually think, with hindsight, Butland could have pushed that out to a Celtic attacker and would have been very yeah. disappointed because that's kind of straight at him where it should be. There was plenty of space uh, beside Butland that far corner for me to take him at. It was a couple of let's go to one. let's just go with the first one right now with Maeda. Right, and then what, what frustrated me with that was I think Maeda's at the time he's got you know you've set yourself execute it better, but then there's one that I think is going to slip through the net. The O'Reilly one, yep, spectacular save. Don't think O'Reilly could do any more with that header, but it's Kyogo's one at the back post that really gets me. Kyogo's is a guilt edged header at the back post, Terry, and I don't understand. What entirely it is Kyogo's trying to do with that effort? He, the balls came across. He's at the back post running in, and all he has to do is head that back towards goal. Somehow, though, Kyogo sends it not just a bit wide, it's about three yards wide from a guilt-edged opportunity. And I actually think because Kyogo's missed that opportunity by so far, or, or, or by such a great margin, is diluted how good a chance that was. That was guilt edged mate, at the back post. You've snuck in, you've done the hard bit, good connection on the ball. Yeah, he seems to think the goals are three yards <laughs> further to write them what they were because that's disappointing me, that one, because I do feel when I look at that, I go, that's not going to get the, the, the amount of comment on it as it should, purely because he's missed it by that much. That was guilt edged Terry, that one for Kugo as well. And one of a few in the first half, when you think about it, we could have went in at half time way way clear uh it's see these games boys they see when you watch it live and you're going through the emotions and every single touch of the ball is fucking pinching on your heart i i didn't see that as a guilty opportunity that you've described but if i if i watch it back tonight or tomorrow which i might well do you're going oh my god how's he not how's he not done better there and then you compare it to maybe Dessers. Dessers in the, what was it, the 98th or something? I don't know why there was eight minutes of added time. There was no difference to the first half against the second half. There was no difference. There was two minutes in the first half when we we're 2-0 up, and there was eight minutes in the second half when they are trying to find one. But it didn't feel at the time as if that's a guilty opportunity. But if you look at it back in the light of day, it was a, it was a tremendous chance, a tremendous chance. And I don't know, I don't know if he's expecting the defender to get it in front of him and then you're not just quite set for it or whatever. But in, in Kyogo's defense, I thought Kyogo done a hell of a lot of work. Yeah, I agree. The first half he done a hell. And there was one boy say we talk about Maida getting the rewards of his efforts over two years with the tavernier. There was one Kyogo Kyogo closed down and Bottom just about got away with it. And see if he hadn't, see if he hadn't, it was straight in the net. It was it was in the six yard box. It was straight in the net. And you know, you, you sometimes get the rewards for something you've been doing for years. Yeah, like you were saying about either. In the present so, time. That's the major one. Me, talk to me where you're at, at half time then, because 2 0, I'll be honest, as much as it could have been more. I was very optimistic. Like this, we are, you're we're thinking playing, job done. You're thinking job we're done. We're playing very well. We're playing very well here. Yes, there's been the odd opportunity missed, but when you look at that as a body of evidence in the first half, we're the dominant team. Qualities came to the top. This is the strongest Celtic eleven we've been able to field against Rangers so far this campaign. 
and I thought it told. That 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 was where I was at. Obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing. You 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 fast forward 45, 53, 55 yeah. minutes, however many minutes it was, Nine after and you go, that first half's actually proven costly that we went for the red. <laughs> but Nine. notwithstanding that, you go in at the second half, and we've spoke about this many times on, on the PMP shows, right? Celtic, when they've been in positions of strength, have looked a bit phased on occasion. Celtic, when they've had adversity, haven't reacted particularly well. Today, we had a position of strength early on and proper built from it, Terry. We proper built from it. But then early on in the second half, we have adversity. And sadly, that trait of not being able to deal with adversity came back to us. Talk to me about how Celtic started the second half before we get to the penalty decision, because as much as the penalty decision will be spoken about, leading up to that, we clearly hadn't came out the traps the same way we did that first half. I've already felt there had been a bit of a momentum shift before the penalty. I bet flip that, Boise. Flip that. You're you're in the other dressing room. You've been absolutely played off the park by your biggest rivals in front of your own supporters. You've gone off at half time to crescendos of boos with maybe 5,000 making their way out of the stadium. The manager's gone in there. John Beaton's gone in there. Nick Walsh has gone in there. Between the three of them have done their halftime team talk and they've got them absolutely revved up to the balls. And then they come out and they get, I wouldn't even say a period of uh, ascendancy, but the first five, whatever minutes of the second half is played out, yeah, of course Rangers are going to come out and they're going to be up for it. Their whole season is dependent on trying to get out of this mess. They're up for it. And I know you I know you don't want to fast forward to the decision, but there was nothing before the decision that was clinical. There was there was nothing there. Yes, yes, they were up for it. Yes. Slight momentum shift though. Oh, There'd been a slight yes. momentum shift oh, from where we were going in at half time. A little bit. And where we went at half time to the, the beginning of that second yeah. half, I you're I talking, felt there'd been a bit of a change. You're talking percentages here. You're talking yes. you're talking two, uh -huh. three, you're talking two, three percent here. Yep. Until until that decision happens, there's nothing there that I'm worried about at all. You, you, they're going to come out because, as I said, all all the all the key players are in there in the dressing room. They're all making that fucking monumental team talk. Of course, they're going to come out and go for it. They're two 0 down at home against the championship rivals to try and keep their season alive. Of course, they're going to come out and go for it. But there was nothing in the passage of play other than they had a bit more possession. There was no clear-cut chances. There was there was nothing until that decision. Nothing. So we get to the decision then. Uh, Alistair Johnson, for me, is falling back, nicks the ball. As he's falling back, naturally, his legs go in the air. But his movement's the one that you should focus on, not the other player at first. If you look at Johnston, he's actually rocking backwards, gets his foot in the ball, he's already off balance, going back. Yes, his leg's in there. James McFadden, after the game, is saying he's left his leg dangling out. As you're falling backwards, your body tips, your legs are going to be in the air. This is not fucking rocket science. He has nicked the ball first. It's one movement. See, he, hasn't nicked, it, boss. he hasn't nicked it, he's played it. Right. But whatever you want to call it. He's played the ball. The point, I'm trying to make is, though, the point I'm trying to make is there's not two separate movements here from Johnson. He nicks the ball, and by getting to the ball off balance, he falls back. It's all the one movement. So how does this turn into what I think they're looking at as like a secondary challenge, a second challenge, because basically they're rendering when he's touched the ball relevant, and then he's took his... You know, high up in his shin, he's clipped that, and that's why it's given the pen. But it's the one tackle. It's just the way it's went because he was off balance. He's falling back as he's won it. He's won the ball, and then he's clipped the man. But he's won the ball. It's a contact sport. Then you get to Fabio Silva, who'd been rolling about, grabbing his throat, grabbing his face, like an absolute bam the whole first half. He was, as Sutton says so well, embarrassing. But when it, came, it wasn't even Sutton. Chris Boyd called him embarrassing. Yeah, exactly. That's how but, bad he was. But he is already going to go down. 
that's that's modern football, to be perfectly honest with you. I I am not surprised by what he did whatsoever. And to be honest, do I blame him in the modern day? Not really, because he's felt a clip or he knows he's gonna get clipped, so he's on his way down. But it's Johnston that I, I don't understand. I don't think they've took full account of what he's done. He's won the ball in the same movement as he's going down. That's why his legs in that position. They're looking at it like he's won the ball, then there's another phase where he's clipped the guy in the knee. That's not what's happened. It's the same challenge. If he wins the ball first, then clips the man, that ain't a foul. It's simple yes, as that's contact you're sport. Absolutely right. you're so absolutely that's right. what's frustrated me with that one. No, listen, you're absolutely right. Right, I'm I'm going to talk to you what I've written down on my page, and I like to do this because it, it it's quite good. I wrote down on my page, brilliant, 50 minutes, 50 minutes, brilliant decision from John Beaton. I wrote this down on my page. Brilliant decision from John Beaton. He noticed that Silva simulated and played for the penalty and he gave him a yellow card. Then I've written 51 decision, 51 minutes, fuck off. That's what I've wrote with two exclamation marks. So listen, I'll just repeat that for anybody that's watching. 50 minutes, brilliant decision from John Beaton, the Ranger supporter who said Silva fucking simulated and he gave me a yellow card. Then I've written 51. I've just written fuck off. That's all yeah. I've written. I've just written fuck off. So John Beaton, right? You nailed let's, that. Though. That's kind of it was, eh? But let's, let, 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 let's talk about John Beaton, right? Because I wouldn't like to have been John Beaton today. I would not have liked to have been John Beaton. John Beaton is a Ranger supporter. John Beaton is a referee. I would not have liked to have been in that position. And see some of... I thought John Beaton got a lot of the big decisions right. I thought a lot of the small decisions that might lead to a big decision, as in we had four yellows, they had none. I thought there was a something bubbling underneath where he was fucking trying to go, right, how do I influence this game without making myself look like a fucking absolute tit? There's no way we should have had four yellows and they had none. But the big decisions... Other than this one, I thought he got right. And he actually did get this one right. He got this decision right, but he allowed Nick Walls to fucking then overturn the decision. And then he looks like a cock and he goes, I got that decision wrong. He didn't. He got it right first time. Uh, he got yep, the decision yep, yep. right in real play. Alistair Johnson got the ball. There was contact after the ball. That fucking absolute idiot of a thirty-five million pound player uh, no, he was, was already player. on his way down. John Beaton yep. has let himself down a bagful because see if he had the balls, the same way as Willie Collum had the balls to go against Far. John Beaton got the decision right first time, yep. and he's then allowed himself to look like a tit. By well, do you know what though? Do you know minute. what though, Terry? It comes back and bites him in the arse though, doesn't it? Because John Beaton is literally four or five yards away from Iwata getting fouled in the lead up to what they thought was their equaliser when their fans were on the pitch and stuff, brilliant. Um, that, that's, that's 100%. There's no, there's let no black and white there. That was 100%. I know you're keen, mate. I like, I like your enthusiasm. Just let me explain my point. What I'm trying to say is, why it's been so funny is John Beaton's looked at that and decided not to give a foul. But you've just given a penalty after watching it on a camera for a very similar height of a boot against the player and that connection. So what occurs? He has to go back to the VR, VAR screen and go, well, consistency, you've got to be John. And I think by going back and giving that penalty has actually led to him trying to kid on he didn't see a lot of getting fouled, which he did try to kid on he didn't see. He was right in front of it, having to go at the screen and trudge back over again to go, fuck. Because there's no way you could get away with saying that was a penalty and then not giving that as a foul. So it's actually came back a bit worse because he tried to cheat that. He tried to cheat that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. He actually, tried to, he watched it. He was four five yards wrong. away I've from the guy getting you're fouled. Calling right. You're calling and right. And he, li he literally looked at that getting fouled and just kidded on he hadn't seen it. And it's like, oh, oh, John, 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 this is going to look silly for you. And it's that beginning of the phase of their attack and play that he's got to go back and watch. And you go, I think that time just about three minutes ago, you gave 
They have a penalty for fuck all. How Aye. try and not give that as a foul? So you have nowhere you. to run there. So there was a bit of good karma in that one. I felt that that he looked no. like the biggest fan in the world because he tried to dodge and he tried to avoid what his own eyes told him. And his eyes, he was right in front of that Iwata foul. And he tried to kid on. Oh, I've never seen it. And you're like, fuck off beating. That's nonsense. That was a foul on Iwata all day, every day. And he decided, he decided, I'll kid on, I've not seen that one. Not just after you've given that penalty, son. You ain't getting away with it. And I'm glad that he got pulled to the screen. And for the second time that day, he's probably had to, fuck's sake, I hate this bit. I forgot there was VAR again. <laughs> I I say I get I get what you're saying, right? But the wow the what a foul was a, like see if this was who wants to be a millionaire and you called the audience in, they would all go it would be a hundred percent that was a foul. But see the one before that with and, and the thing is Chris Boyd and I know Boyd gets a lot of stick and I give him most of it. And people call into question why Sky Sports allowed him to sit there. But he talked at halftime about how embarrassed he was as an ex-Rangers player and a Rangers supporter. He was embarrassed by this player. And then you get that penalty decision, which if you watch it, Alistair Johnson wins the ball. And you've got this idiot fucking trying to win a penalty. John Beaton. And John Beaton will be happy enough tonight that his team have got a result. But as a professional referee, he will look at that and go, I got the right first time. And I have allowed myself to be influenced to get that wrong. There's bound to be some part in John Beaton where he looks at it and goes, I got that right. And I've allowed Nick Walsh to to put some kind of doubt in my mind. But the Iwata one, boy, see. Yeah, this is what it flips the other doesn't it? The Iwata because... one is not even... It's not even in question at any stage. I I watched it live on Sky TV. And see when Rangers scored, I had absolutely zero emotion because I knew, I knew it was going to come back. It was, it was a 100% clear and obvious foul on Iwata. There was no way that was going to be given. Absolutely no way in the world. But the... So see when Nick, well, let's talk about then what you're saying there from a professional standpoint. You're saying, which I'm not disagreeing here, by the way. I wouldn't Nick, swap places with John Beaton, by the way. I wouldn't swap places with him, would you? Can I? Would I, I was going like to ask, I was ask you a question. Would you like to be in that position? I wouldn't. I was going to ask you a question, though, based on what you just told me, right? Yeah, go ahead. So you were saying Nick Walsh has kind of casted doubt on what John Beaton's instinct was. Yeah, which is it, its first instinct with that being a dive, I think is correct, right? And I think yeah. John's won the ball because as soon as you feel contact, they go down anyway, right? But he's won the ball, so it's not a foul. That's one hundred percent, and he's allowed. So he's allowed. He's allowed doubt to be cast on him by by Nick Walsh. But then the same things happen then with regards to Iwata. To be fair, you question the guys, you, you know, whether his professional mindset must get them go. Why did I let myself be influenced? Well, I flip it though, and I look at the second one and go, well, now we get back to incompetence then. Because if he's got a moral, a, 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 a morsel of, of professionalism in him, when Nick Walsh has to go, okay, I need to look at VAR again, mate. That Iwata one, John Beaton is staring right down the barrel of, and he has decided to go play on and allow Rangers that attack. That's nothing to do with professionals at that point. That's What's not even incompetence. Listen. Listen, you've got to put yourself in that man's position, right? I don't. No, no, you've got to. You've got to. No. You're a supporter. You're a supporter with a whistle in the middle of that park. And I, I, I'll talk to you about what I experienced today. And you know, you know, I've been traveling about England for the last twenty four hours trying to get home just to watch this match on my own TV. But I watched this match. I watched this match in my shed with Is my dad. Listen, with my dad, which is a fucking very difficult experience, I gave that man a seat. He didn't even fucking, his arse didn't touch it once. He's standing on the fucking edge of the seat. Everything's going mad. You're on the, you're watching the game. Right, you, you're a supporter that feels like me and my dad and you, and you find yourself in the middle of that pitch making decisions that decide this game. 
But you just said a minute ago, it's professionalism. It's like. But you just said a minute ago, it's professional manner, though. Surely goes, why have I allowed myself to be influenced by Dick Walsh? And I'm saying the opposite thing occurred. Right, let's flip it. Let's flip it. Let's flip it. Let's flip it. Flip it, Boise. You're John Beaton. You're in the middle of the park. You're making them decisions. Do you make them clearly and professionally? Do you? You just said that surely is professionalism. No. It's professionalism. Says to him, why am I letting it go? Do you? Your heart rules your right. head. Your fucking heart rules your head, man. <laughs> well, anyway, these shouldn't be factors that when a referee's making decisions, should they? Well, they don't. You shouldn't be talking about other team Scottish, supporters. If you employ Scottish referees to referee the biggest game in Scotland, you're going to have a lead in one way or the other. You're going to. But have that's. A lead. But should we be factoring in the fact that he supports one of the teams into it? Yeah, no. Of course you should. What? Of course you should. If I you go down to the Premiership, let's go down to the Premiership. The biggest, the biggest league in the world for just selling media coverage and all of this. Those guys have to declare who they support, and they cannot have any game that influences anybody that they support. We're up here, and we're employing Rangers fans to represent. This is what I'm saying. You're, you're missing what, I, what I'm trying to say is: should we really though? In, in a professional game, our top flight, our biggest no. fixture, we're we take into consideration. Well, no, bear in mind, he's a Rangers fan, so we need to take that into factor that we're in. Tin what? Pot. We're ten pot. Why we're should we have pot. to factor in though? Why? Why? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I actually think I actually think apart from apart from the undertones, right? And the undertones. By what I mean, the undertones is no. The undertones I mean is. The throw that went one way against the other, and the free kicks were 60 40, 75 25. And the four yellow cards Celtic got against no yellow cards that Rangers got, which is an underlying plan to potentially send somebody off later on. I mean, were Celtic dirty against Rangers? Was there four yellows against zero yellows? That That's the kind of thing that Beaton was trying to influence. He wasn't trying to influence something obvious. He was trying to fucking think, right, I can give a yellow against this fucker and at some point in the game later on he does an obvious one, then I can get rid of him. There was no way in that game there was four yellows to one team against another. That game was just even in terms of tackles and malice and all the rest. Do you think that affected our press and the intensity of it with the yellow cards? I think it did to an extent. I think the bookings did affect our press. I think it makes you more hesitant. You have to pull out the challenges, and you, you can't be. So I, I did think that impacted us a bit, to be honest with you. The bookings, and I thought, we, I thought we carried them into the second what, half. That's what he was able to influence without making himself look like a fucking absolute dickhead. Yeah. So two one is the score. That goal is disallowed, and they were at that point in their mind ramping. Um, did you feel it was going to go two two? I did. I I, I didn't hold much hope that we were going to be able to see it out at 2-1 by the time it got to the the, the 80 minute mark. I thought, oh, I don't know. Let's be clear about it. Let's be clear about Russell. We didn't come out for the second half. Yes, yeah, they had their team talk and they got that decision, which I honestly think, I think if that penalty doesn't happen, if that penalty doesn't happen, we see it out comfortably, right? But at that time, with that adversity, we're still in the lead. And we did not do enough in that second half to get the result. We didn't. We didn't. Well, then when it does go 2 2, you start to get an Odson Edward vibes of that. Remember that that 3 2 win, which kind of sealed the oh, title? Yeah. I think that was the 2017 18 season. And I got that vibe. We go straight up the park, 71 seconds between it going 2 2. Suddenly it's 3 2. Celtic, a brilliant move, brilliant finish from Ida, who I actually thought. Did okay. Different give Bernardo, give Bernardo his credit. What a cool composed pass that was. Ice cold. I thought it was brilliant. Waited to perfection and took his time before even playing it. And then fair play either, by the way. I, I thought he had a good, yeah. a, a few good moments. But that goal was, you thought, fucking hell. You could see there's a rough gem there that I can see why Rogers wants to sort of try before you buy sort of thing with him. You can almost feel Will we send him? Will we send him? Well, I don't know. But I, I don't know if his value goes up 
or stagnates for a six month spell. If he's, eight, if he's eight million, he can fuck off. But, he's but that's one the point I'm making. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, he's not going to be one and a half either way. But yeah, I know what you're saying, though. His, his value might. His value might stagnate for what have been seen as a a good job, but a decent job, well done. But sales, they might not win if they don't. If we don't win the league, if we don't win the league, that could drop his value. But in terms of what he he brought on today, it was a different dynamic to what Kyogo did. I actually thought he was. I thought he was effective, and that reply for Celtic as well showed. Yeah, do you know what annoys me? Do you know what annoys me? Balls. As you go to the school second half, we've suddenly. Stepped yeah. off them and exactly. forgotten how vulnerable. Why, why are we not pushing on? We've forgotten how vulnerable they are. When we're asking questions of them, they've not always got answers either. And yet that seemed to be a moment in a, a, a rare moment in that second half where we actually did so. And funnily enough, we got funnily enough, we got some purchase on it. But even then, at three two, I have to be honest and, and say I was not convinced that meant we would go on and win it. Maybe for a 60 second wee spell dancing about the living room, I thought, ha, ah, it's the hope that kills you. But deep down, having watched the second half, I thought they would have a leveler in them. And so it proved. Boy, well, say, here, here's the thing. At any stage of that match, did you have total confidence that you knew what the outcome was going to be? I felt like. Half time. Much... Half time. Yeah, yeah, I half felt time. very composed there. Half time, yes. Okay. But once they went 2-2, two, two, did you think at any point we would find a way to go upfield and score again? No, I didn't. I thought I thought we were done for. I thought, you're you're sitting here, you've got the rest of this game, there's no supporters, we've just blew a 2-0 lead, and then all of a sudden we got there and we got there and then score. It was just absolutely crazy how the, the rest of that game played out. And... I'm sitting here and I will absolutely tell the truth. I thought if we get out of here with a draw, that makes me, in my head, favourites we go on to win this league. But when I was about to come on here with you after a draw, I'm going, Jesus, this is this is just let's absolutely about, dreadful. Let's talk about their, their third goal, Terry. And I, I know... Cal Mack will get criticised for, for their second goal, for the passing. Yes, I think we've, glo we've glossed over that a wee bit, to well, be honest. I'll tell you the reason McGregor, why. McGregor, goes, McGregor was culpable two times, and I honestly think if that was any other player, he wouldn't yep. have been in the match day squad. Right. But the thing is with McGregor's pass, if you actually look at it, we were playing those sort of passes first half, no problem. We were on our heels second okay. half, and we weren't as, we weren't as productive, and we weren't playing with that confidence, and we weren't expecting... Passes to be made with zip, etc. Just because we, we, we fell off the off the wagon a wee bit in that second half, to be honest with you, a bit like yourself, Terry. You know, um, but I've been off the wagon since fucking Wednesday. <laughs> That's all right, mate. But I felt McGregor's pass in the first half we were getting away with those. Second half we've not because Celtic were playing on their heels. Yeah, that's but fair. The that's one that fair. gets me the most, Terry, is the third goal. Yang is fresh legs on the park. The least you expect is to show him down the line. That is all you've got to do. It's not just that he lets him in, Terry, and the inside cut on his right foot. He gives up. It's even you give up in a game like this, and you're fresh. You're, you're, your energy levels aren't sapped. You're 20-year-old. You're full of beans. You're only been in the part time. You should be dying to impress. You should know what's at stake. And I'll instead of the I'll basics... No, please I'll don't again. No, you've no, stopped me enough times. I'll stop you. Oh, I'll stop you right sake. now. Okay. No, I'm I'm gonna go to my notes, right? And I made my notes, I made my notes after 20 minutes. And I don't like to cut across you. I don't like to cut across you, as you know. Oh, right. you sure? I made my notes. I, th I thought Kuhn, I thought Kuhn was absolutely <laughs> anonymous in the first half. Yes, bear with me, bear with me. I thought Kuhn was anonymous. And I thought about this for a long time. I knew me spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, and then after your wee sabbatical, about two weeks before that, and I talked, and we talked about the manager's comments where he said, at different stages of this run-in, James Forrest is going to be pivotal. I I didn't fancy Kuhn from the start today. I fancied Forrest, right? And see, whenever Kuhn started the game, and I watched... 
uh, what was happening, and never mind beating Book and Kuhn for about three other fouls that other people have done. I was thinking, right, at what point in this run-in does Forrest become pivotal? I thought today was the, the fucking one game where Forrest becomes pivotal. Right, what's he got? Has he got 20 minutes? Has he got 40 minutes? Has he got 60? Has he got 80? Has he got 90? Kuhn was anonymous. Can and we talk about the third goal again? Where listen, are you going? <laughs> well, listen to me. Kuhn, Kuhn, everything broke down with Kuhn, right? And I was thinking, right, Kuhn's going to get hooked here. But I love Yang, right? I'll be honest. I, I think there's something in Yang. I think Yang's a fucking baller. I think he's an entertainer. But I'm sending my dad, and he's sitting there with his wee 75-year-old heart, drinking a fucking bottle of beer, trying to keep himself alive in case he sees 76. And I says to him, I says, this isn't Yang's game. This is James Forrest's game. Somebody that knows how to get the job done. Somebody that know how, knows how to work this fixture. Somebody that can get this over the line. I want James Forrest on. When Jim, Rogers talked about it. When's James Forrest is going to be pivotal? When? Today was, today was the day when James Forrest was going to be pivotal. He's played this fixture for the last 15, 20 years. Today's the day to bring James Forrest on. I've wrote on page, right? And listen, we were ahead. We were ahead when I wrote this. Yang looks nervous as he comes on. He's blowing out fucking air. Yang was blown out of his cheeks like a fucker. And he's only been brought on. He hasn't even played fucking... He hasn't even played 60 seconds. I thought Yang looked nervous. And I think Yang's nervousness called us that third goal. I don't think that was nervous, mate. He gave up. He fucking gave up. Forrest, Basics are to show them the He showed a right footer inside. He showed a right footer inside. But then he stops. The he stops so Terry as well. That's he what gets was. See, well, let me fit. So, see when you, you're showing him down the line, that's, that was the basic thing to do, right? Yes. But see when he's not done it, and he's let him inside. He's just he stopped. Up. He's just stopped. He's, and that's where my... That one is the one where I look at and I go... That's unforgivable for me that you've given up there. See when I see someone give up like that, Terry, that's not right. Basics, that's not it's about basics, boys. No, the basic bit is you show him down the line, but the bit that's given up, that's not basics, mate. Giving up is giving up. That's a mental thing, mate. And it's basics. And you're not getting up. no, he's not get he is he's not getting up. it, mate. He's not getting what's at stake, and he's not yeah. He's not feeling the, the, the fixture the way that we're it. hoping anyone that gets the gift of playing for Celtic. I look at Yang and I don't want to be, I do not want to be over critical of a young lad, but I'm so sorry when it comes to this one, Yang, nah, you're going to need to take this on the chin. You do the first bit wrong, which is the basics. See the second bit when, you show, when you've let him inside, you have to do something to try and then block whatever's coming your way or whatever's coming our way. And I he has him. stopped, and he's just letting go a yeah. yard in, and he's just giving up, mate. He's like, eh, he's beat me. I totally Who agree cares? With you. I totally I agree can't with you. Now, that's costly, mate. That's very costly, and that isn't the basics bit. There's the basics bit. You should already know. See the giving up bit. You can't teach that. That's an attitude. That's a fucking attitude problem, and that's like, something totally for me who's not grasping you. what it is we need. I totally agree with you. I like Yang. I've been, I've been on the Yang bus from the start. I think, I think there is a quality winger in there. I think he's better than Kuhn. But see, for today's fixture, all I, all I could have in my head, apart from Yang and uh, Kuhn, all I, was think, again, eh? all I was thinking about was Forrest, man. Fucking like, what are we waiting for? The manager's gone. There will be times where James Forrest is the right option. I honestly thought today was the right he, option. Today would have been, I agree with that, by the way. Yeah, I know you do. I agree with that. I it's actually think, to be honest, sensible see thing. when it came to a substitute, I wouldn't have started Forrest. All season. What are you saving him for? Yeah. Experience. Fucking yeah. Scotland yeah. International. Playing for Celtic for the last 15, 20 years. What are you saving him for? What are you saving him yeah. for? Fucking sitting there at home. Today's a strange one, that. Forrest. It is a strange one that the, what what is it Rogers thought would well, be see, a good idea for, there with that, and it's, it has been costly. Today was the day for Forrest and Yang. As much as there was lots of things happened in that game, 
if Yang shows him down the outside, we win that game 3-2 in 99 times out of 100 scenarios. Yang has absolutely no knowledge of Matondo. He has no idea what Matondo is going to do. And this goes back to Brendan's fucking spreadsheets and his Word documents where he tells you about what your opponent's going to do. No, this is not you, Brendan. Matondo, Matondo comes inside every single time. James Forrest would have known Matondo's going to come inside. Yang, Yang just lets him inside. and He can't have it both ways. He, he gives up, mate. Undeniably, he gives up. You've already said it's basic, so you can't then put it on a Roger spreadsheet. Where I think Roger's got it fucking wrong was bringing the wrong guy on. He brought the wrong guy on. It shouldn't have been Yang who comes mate. on. Forrest was in But mate. I don't think that's based on then spreadsheets. I thought, great yeah, finish, by the way. That's okay. Great that's finish. okay. But the manager also said James Forrest is going to be pivotal in the last games of the season. Mm. I cannot think of any fixture where James yep. Forrest would have been more pivotal than you're sitting at Ibrox. You've got a lead. The board's gone up with eight minutes, which I have absolutely no fucking idea why there's eight minutes because in the first half when we were in the ascendancy, there was two minutes and there was no stoppages in the second half. But having said that, Yang and Kuhn... If I think about this whole 90 minutes back, that's a one position where I think we were absolutely weakest. I I think Kim was the right start. I think Kim was the right start because he's played well since Yang got suspended. I thought he was, I thought he was decent first half, to be honest. He was okay. well. I'm, I'm no, not, I'm was, not there, was times, there was times I was thinking, just keep possession. And yeah, yeah, I quite like this first half display. But at no point did I think, and I love Yang. I, I really, really do love Why? Yang. But it, what about just, you love? No, I, I'll tell you, you what, I just think there's an exciting thing in him where he, I just think there's this thing, even though at times this season we've been under pressure, everybody's thinking play the same, play the safe pass, do this, do that. I always thought Yang as a winger, and I'm partial to wingers, Yang was always available to take the ball and he was always willing mm. to take his man on. He was always willing to take his man on, no matter what the boos were saying, no matter what the when result was, this, was, no matter what the score was, Yang took his man on. I when always thought he was positive. I always thought he was positive. I do. I honestly do. You can clip me all you want. I do think Wang... Oh, I am. Uh, sorry, Wang. <laughs> Wang. <laughs> I do think Yang will turn out to be a good footballer for this club. But at no point today did no. I think that was the right environment for him when you've got James Forrest sitting on the bench. Right, OK. Let's talk then about reactions and we'll wind it up after that. But the reactions yes. to the reactions to today's game were interesting. I think from a lot of Celtic fans, there's a few that are, you said to me before we came on, you were a bit deflated. Um, oh, you've sort of been massively deflated. But, but let's not just... No, no, just yourself. I think... Across the board, I think there's a strong percentage of. Um, I think you've called him Wang, by the way, instead of Yang. There's I did call him Wang. I did. I corrected myself. He's Yang. There's a lot He's of Yang. There's only him, there's man. only so many vodkas you can drink in a week. I'm trying Trust to me. Well, you're pushing the record anyway. Right. But uh, I think <laughs> the reactions say a lot because they were really, really jubilant at full time. Why? I but. but this is what we're going to discuss. So what does it tell you? Celtic were in a must-not-lose situation. Celtic yeah. are now six wins from the last six, and we win the league. That does include one more derby, but that derby is going to be at home. Yeah. And with all the advantages that they had today, yeah. we'll now have at Celtic Park. I think it is advantage Celtic winning the final run. Finally, can we show the consistency? We've got six from six yeah. to win. They've got seven from seven they need to win. But their next two are away. We've got St Mirren at home and they have two away games, Terry. Dundee on whatever yeah. you want to call it, a cabbage patch. Or, and or somewhere away. else if the SPL decide they have to play it. And, you know, well, I think there's an inquiry into that. And then they've got away from home again. Uh, is it Motherwell? I could be wrong. Um, next weekend. I might have just made that up. It wouldn't surprise me. We've got some Mirren at home this weekend. I've got a feeling our running's going to start looking more and more 
comfortable than theirs. Here's my prediction. See, when I see a team that buzzing with getting out alive, essentially, in a game really they had to win to set the real marker down, when I see them that delighted that they're still alive and they're basically not counted out yet, I see a team that could drop points this midweek. That's my honest opinion. I think we're halfway there to watching the, a Ross County away. Thank you, Jay Bowsers. Apologies. Condors is in as well. Thank you, uh, Stephen McGonagall. Legends, I appreciate that. Ross County away. But Dundee away midweek, I wouldn't be surprised if they drop points. I seen a side desperate. See, when you see reactions like that, I'm not talking about the performance, but the reaction of that jubilation at getting a draw at home with us in a game that really they were fancied. All the momentum was apparently with them. I think for me, that that tells me that they're showing weakness and they'll slip up at one of the next opportunities that they can. I wouldn't surprise me if it's the game in hand, the one they know counts, because it's the one that could put them back top. I think that'll be the only they slip up. I think the mental edge will go back to Celtic. Boys, I see if you and me had spoke at 11 o'clock today and you told me this would end a draw, I would have said to you, that yep. is massive. Massive advantage Celtic in the running. Now we know the way the game's played out. That's okay. And we're emotionally involved in the 90 minutes that we've watched. But at some point you have to step back and you detach yourself from that 90 minutes and the 90 minutes from last week and the 90 minutes before. And you wind yourself back to the 90 minutes that started in August and you watch the whole thing from the bigger picture. So at the start of today, if you told me we were coming out of this game with us, what are we, two points behind? In the grand scheme of things, if, if they win their game. We're hand, one point ahead, mate. That's uh, if they win their, if they win their game point. in hand. Yeah, if they <laughs> win their game in hand. Like, let, let's give them. Let's give them. No, I'm them not. This point. is my whole point. I think they're no, dropping no, points let's, midweek. Let's give them <laughs> points. Right. Let's what? give them points. <laughs> Listen, let's give them a point. We're going into the last five games. Let's give them a point. Give them. Give them a point. We're My whole point is I think games. they're going to slip up with their game in hand. And you've just bypassed They're not going to slip up with Dundee, right? Let's give them the points for Dundee. We're going into the last five. We're behind. But we have a Celtic Rangers game at home with no way supporters. I think... I think we're slightly favourites at this point. And today feels like a defeat. And if you watch the TV and you watch all the pods and you watch all these fucking idiots celebrating, high-fiving around the park after a draw, after a draw against your biggest rivals when they've had no supporters in the stadium, I think we're favourites going into the last five games. Let's see what happens against Dundee. You know... You just gave them the points a minute ago. My no, whole... I have given them. I have given them the points. <sighs> I'm, I'm okay. happy to. I'm happy to give them the points. But, but my still, argument is, my argument they've still, is, they've still got to go with them and get them. They. My, that's what they, I'm trying to say. Though see, I'm saying, see the comment. Team? See the yeah, comments on the screen there. Talk. I will because this is my show. See the comments on the screen there. They celebrated on that park as if they had fucking won the league today, and that's a joke. That's an absolute joke. <laughs> I mean, I I think they showed mental weakness by being so jubilant. And that's why I think the game in hand, which they need to then get their noses in front, I think they might slip up there. But we will it's wait and see. It's a skin. It's a skin. We will wait it's and a... see. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a very entertaining PMP. It has been a fantastic, a fantastic weekend. So they came out with the point that I thought they needed as a minimum requirement. We got that. The sad thing is, we had the league twice and we didn't get the win. But, as ever, the league title remains very much in our hands. And I think with the advantage of us at home, I'm feeling optimistic we will win the league. Let us know in the comments what you think. Terry, it's been a blast. See you all later. Cheers.